Welcome back to 7 Day Yield. Gary Melcher recently sat down with Michael Spellacy, who paints a picture of the opportunities and challenges for the wealth management business today and in the future. Here's what Michael had to say. I think the best way to frame it is, I think we're in the middle of uh, two things happening simultaneously. There's a very loud revolution and there's a quiet revolution in the wealth management business. The loud revolution is what you see as, or hear as, the headline grabbing headlines around intergenerational transfer of wealth, robo-advisors, regulation, privacy, transparency, and otherwise. And the quiet revolution is underneath the surface is the structural change taking place in the industry as how people will respond to this. Yeah. And to be very frank, the vast majority of wealth managers are really struggling with this issue. In terms of intergenerational transfer of wealth, the loud headline is, think about this for a moment, by 2020, Essentially, over 50% of all wealth will be held by Generation X and Millennials. That is a very, very powerful statement. Generation X and Millennials, also we know, when, they tra when assets transfer from one generation to the next, over 50% of those assets do not stay with the originating institution. Those two things together put us in the center of a storm around what will institutions do to manage this situation. The future of advice, however, is something where we are engaged in a set of conversations with our clients around what does it mean to be a trusted advisor going forward? What does it mean to interact with a generation that, doesn't, that essentially doesn't uh, cooperate or doesn't interact with you in the same way that the prior generation has? And what does it mean from the very, very core of what does trust mean in your, in your platform? In fact, we see that the extension of the advice from the actual advisor out to the client is probably become much more important than what it has been in the past. Yeah that while asset allocations may or may not remain the same, how the person interacts with the underlying customer is really important. Let me give you an example. An example is, let's say you're sitting at home on your couch and you see that XYZ firm has just gone through an E. coli outbreak in their stores. Well, what does this mean to my portfolio? I'm exposed to that particular restaurant or that particular stock in my portfolio. Yeah. And maybe I have other adjacent stocks or other adjacent investments that are associated. What does it mean? You call up your advisor, the advisor says, I don't know, let me get back to you tomorrow. In today's world, right. that's really not appropriate, number one. And number two is, it really br it shows you the breakages in the system. Whereas the question is, what would you have to believe for your advisor to say, absolutely, Joe or Mary, fantastic, I see what's in your portfolio, I can see it right now, let me push it to your screen, let me run some what-ifs analyses for you, show you what it means, and by the way, everything is fine because you're only exposed in 1% of your portfolio in the 1% that's actually associated with this particular piece. If you think about digital mobile, and then you think about what's happening in fintech. Sure. That's a, a, a lot of change taking place there, which is likely, I would think, to change the wealth management industry. So what are we seeing happening in terms of mobile, digital, and then the fintech firms both out in California and, and, and a growth of those type of firms right here in New York. Sure, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's clearly one of the hottest topics in the, in the wealth management business today is the topic of robo-advice and fintech in association with robo-advice. And what we, see is, what we see occurring is this idea that the robo-advisors are going to suddenly take over the industry. Um, as a professional opinion, we think what robo-advisors are really doing is changing the way you interact with the yeah. industry rather than replacing something. The robo-advisors themselves, their business model is quite different from what the traditional models are, which may or may not be good, and there's no judgment as to whether it's not or good, good or, good or bad. But what's really important is the idea that how you interact, the simplicity in the engagement in which you interact, the transparency in which you interact, and the underlying clarity of what your goals are in that situation. That's the kind of lessons learned that are very important for a traditional environment. I want to welcome Gary Melter back to the show. Gary, the wealth transfer statistics that Michael talked about are really staggering. 50% of wealth is being transferred by Gen X and Gen Y. How do wealth managers sort of deal with that intergenerational pivot? I, I think they can. Look, the, the, the expectations of different generations on what they're investing for and kind of where they are in the investment life cycle are clearly different, right? You're in the accumulation phase, you're in the retirement phase, what, what are you? They're able to do that, I think, through a couple of ways. One, it's product development, and I think they're very, very aggressive in developing product that's going to be tailored for their clients. 
Second one is the use of technology. And as the generations become a lot more comfortable in technology, how they provide information, how they communicate with their clients is becoming a lot more directly you know, impacted by the use of technology and is immediate. So I think they are dealing with that generational shift. Well, immediacy is key, especially for millennials. How are they actually building out this technology? I think that they're doing some of this themselves, but you're also seeing a very significant focus on how they're partnering with other firms and other technologies. The emerging technologies are being created, whether it's in Silicon Valley, whether it's elsewhere around the world, there's a lot of very, very interesting um, platforms that are now coming to market. And you're seeing these combinations of much more traditional wealth managers that are, that are partnering with emerging technology firms. And it's a great you know, kind of marriage between you know, the financial side and, and Wall Street with what's going on in Silicon Valley. I think that's sort of leading me into asking you about hashtag fintech sure. because it seems every 24 hour business news cycle talks about fintech. How's fintech sort of playing out in the asset management space? I think we've seen it in a couple of ways. I think first of all, we've all heard the concept of robo advice, right? And how robo advisors are getting into the mix and how that's changing the way in which investment advice is being provided. And I think the second part of this is clearly how the whole digital of, you know, um, rage is kind of happening, how, how they're creating the ability to communicate through digital platforms with investors.